Hello and welcome back to part 6 of my Godot Asteroids tutorial. In this part of the tutorial we're going to cover the bullet collision detection with the asteroids so that the asteroids actually blow up. To begin with we're just going to get them to disappear, we're going to detect the collision and get them to disappear. Um, and in this video we're going to be covering one of the key concepts inside of Godot which is signals. So let's get started. There's a heap of ways that we can do this uh, functionality. Um, Remember earlier on when I was making the player and when we're making the asteroids, we made them area 2Ds. And if we look at the player right now and uh, look over on the inspector, there's a node tab over here. And signals are one of the key concepts inside of uh, Godot uh, in that there are events that are fired by different things, different parts of the game engine that you can hook into and you can connect to your own functions. And that's really the key to it. This area entered one, if you hover over, you'll see it gives you some help. It does say that it's emitted when another area 2D enters this area 2D. You'll notice it also passes. It has a parameter that um, is filled out when that signal is actually fired. So what we can do um, is in their, the simplest possible example would be to connect up this area entered signal in our player with just a function that's on our player and this is quite common um, but we're going to do this slightly differently for the asteroids and I'll show you later. So to connect it up you can either select it and click on connect or you can double click. It'll ask you where you want to put this. We can connect it to anything that's got a script on it effectively um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it does say connecting from the player, what I'm going to do is just simply for now I'm going to connect it straight back to the player um, and we can come back. We, we probably want to put it on the game in the end anyway, but we'll just want to show you this simple, um, the simple way of doing it. It creates a name for it as well. So it says on player area entered and that's um, just basically the on meaning that it's it's on this event has been fired and then the player area, player area entered. So that's the class name or the the game object name. And then this is the um, the event that's fired. So it's it's good to keep this um, wherever possible so that things, uh, so you know exactly what it is that it's doing. When I click connect, what it'll do is it'll actually create this function inside of the script that I just attached it to. And it'll have this little symbol next to it, which shows that, that, that it does have a connection. Um, and all that really happens is that, uh, that that now, when that event is fired by that area 2D, it'll now run this function. So let's just test that it works. So if we just print something, if we just um, print ouch um, is as good as anything, um, what we should see is when another area enters um, this uh, player, we should see this ouch appear. So if I run this script, what you'll see is um, we're looking down the console in here and if I run into something else, if I try to run into something else, you'll see that this event, um, this uh, area entered, this fires the piece of code that we've just written, which prints the ouch statement down in the console. So that's the simplest um, method of using signals. And we're going to have to be a little bit more complicated when we do this for the asteroids. So if I just double click this asteroid scene, um, you'll notice that there is no function right now. Um, and I'm, I've got my uh, signals over here and we've got this area enter signal. And what we're going to do is just connect it. Firstly, we're going to connect it straight up to the, um, the actual asteroid script so that we're able to um, basically disappear the asteroid. And then we'll build on that so that the game knows about it too. So in order to do that, I'm just going to double click um, to connect the asteroid to itself. Um, it's already said on asteroid area entered, which is a good naming convention. And I'm just going to connect this. So the bottom line is um, when we um, when we see this on asteroid area entered, we want to um, basically delete the asteroid. Um, what I might do is I might just show you um, what we're going to do is I'm going to print area dot name. I might actually print um, this hit by as well, just so we can see um, what's happening inside of our uh, console here. So um, when we uh, are hit by something, I'll show you why I'm going to do this in a second, um, we um, we should be able to see its name. So this is, remember this is on every asteroid. And what you're seeing here is this, uh, this issue where um, all of the names of the objects are kind of like all over the place. So each of the asteroids has like a number after it with an at sign. And then it, sometimes it's the, the player. Um, sometimes you get the ouch coming up because the player's been hit by things. So we, we end up, um, even when the bullets, we have different numbers for each of the bullets, which kind of reminds me that we need to, in fact, um, free those bullets up at some point. So we'll do that in a later video. Um, but you can see that it's quite difficult because we can't, 
when this is uh, when the asteroid area entered signal was fired, we can't just remove the uh, asteroid without first checking to see if it's a bullet. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's actually a ton of different ways. One of the ways that I like, um, which I feel is one of the neatest, is, um, as I mentioned before, we can't use, uh, you can see from all these different names, we can't use the name of it as a way of checking to see if it's an actual bullet. But by far the easiest way is if we just give this, um, this bullet uh, script, if we give this a class name, and all you need to do for that is we just say class underscore name, and then the name of the class. And I'm going to keep it, uh, with the naming convention, so it's a capital uh, capital letter for the class name, and um, just like all the other good old classes, they uh, usually start with a capital. So by saying class name bullet, what I'm saying is that this uh, this object that has this script has a class name of bullet. Why it's useful is because inside the asteroid um, right now, um, we can actually just say uh, that if the class name, um, if the thing that hit us uh, is a class of bullet, then we can queue free and delete the, the asteroid. So you just do that really simply. We just say um, if uh, area is bullet. And that is it, believe it or not. We can then just use this um, queue free function to free up this asteroid because we know it's been hit by a bullet. So uh, I don't need to do any print statements here, but we will test it to make sure it works. So as you can see, uh, everything works as expected. When a bullet hits an asteroid, uh, it actually just deletes the asteroid and um, then we're good. Uh, the unfortunate thing is it doesn't actually delete the bullet as well, um, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. We could actually do that too, um, just by also, uh, we'll do this maybe first, delete the bullet first. We'll just say area.q3. Um, and save that and then we'll run this again so I'll just have another quick test so this should also delete the bullet um, if I can hit one so the bullet gets destroyed and the asteroid gets destroyed when they collide so that's not bad however this uh, video is getting kind of long already uh, and I've covered the basics of signals so what we might do is just make an improvement to this um, bullet scene and um, right now this this bullet, uh, they, they never die. Um, and now that we know how to use signals, we can um, we can actually uh, make them make the bullet time out without needing to write much code at all. Uh, basically, one line of code. The way I'm going to do this, so we're going to improve this bullet. We're just going to add um, a child node, um, and we're going to add a timer to it. If we add the timer, the timer has, as you can see over here, a timeout signal. So if I look at the inspector, the timer can be set for a particular time. So uh, one second, sure, we'll, we'll leave it at one second. We don't want it to be one shot. It doesn't really matter. And we don't want it to start. Um, we, uh, sorry, we do want it to start at the beginning because we want that timer to start counting down. When the timer, as we can see from the nodes here, when the timer reaches zero, it will fire this signal timeout. And all we want to do, because this timer is a child of bullet, what we want to do is connect this timeout to the bullet so that we can queue free or delete the bullet when the timer runs out. So it's pretty simple. We'll just double click. We'll say we're going to connect to the bullet because that's kind of the only thing that's got the script. And it's got this on timer timeout. Um, it bugs me how it does the capital letters. I know it's a it's a class, um, which is kind of frustrating, but it, it does bug me. It doesn't look good, but I'll leave that anyway. So we'll click connect. It creates the function for me. And because it's just a simple timer timeout, what we should be able to do is um, we should be able to just queue free um, this, this object. So this object, when the timer times out, will disappear. Now, what I might do um, in the inspector here is just uh, take a little look at this. If I make it this just like a really short time, like 0.1, and then and then we play the game and we fire a bullet you'll see that when the timer times out it disappears it deletes the bullet which is kind of what we want we kind of didn't want uh, 0 0.1 because that would be silly because they would never actually reach the other side of the screen but now one second you basically can't tell but what's happening is it's freeing itself up um, so if it does happen to go off the screen and um, it's not going to just um, remain in memory forever I mean uh, it would take a lot of bullets to crash the computer, but it would actually eventually um, crash if you didn't clean um, clean those up. So it's just good practice. So that's us um, using signals for another purpose as well um, in timers, and uh, that's a pretty simple way of doing it.
So that's the uh, bullet collision detection done. Uh, I do feel though we need to add a few extra things. So um, make game uh, restart um, when player uh, when the player gets hit. And I feel like we should also have um, the uh, the camera shake as well. I really want to put the camera shake in along with the um, shooting and explosions. And uh, I might also put in the small asteroids uh, spawn on asteroid collision. Um, and I'll put a question mark in case we um, kind of run out of time of that one. So there we go. I uh, hope you're enjoying the series and please stick with it.